This lecture is focused on protein analysis. After or during purification of proteins, it is important to understand the level of purity of a sample or to check the abundance of the protein of interest. There are two techniques used to analyze proteins. The first being spectrophotometry, decimate protein concentration, and the second involving sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis or SDS page. The concentration of a protein can be determined using spectrophotometry. Most proteins have tryptophan, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and histidine, which absorb at 280 nanometers. The protein concentration can be estimated based on absorbance using the extinction coefficient of the protein, which can either be experimentally determined or calculated on a theoretical basis using the amino acid sequence of the protein. Several software packages can do this calculation, and in the lab we use Benchling to design DNA sequences and create translated proteins which are automatically analyzed providing this information. The concentration of the protein is therefore related to the absorbance, with the formula shown here being the log of the incident light divided by the emerging light being equal to the absorbance. Beer's law states that this absorbance is equal to the extinction coefficient times the path length of the cuvette used to perform the measurement and times the concentration of the protein sample. The equation can be rearranged to solve for the concentration, but if you plan to use this, you need to make sure that your protein is pure. In some cases, researchers assume that one OD at 280 nanometers equals one milligram per mil which assumes an average protein concentration, but actual values can be widely different. Once the concentration of the protein is known, a sample can be prepped for analysis by SDS page. As mentioned earlier, the addition of SDS normalizes the charge of all the proteins, but not the size. The proteins also need to be reduced to prevent any protein complexes from confusing the actual size of the protein although gels are also run under what is called native conditions to visualize these complexes. In addition to SDS, beta mercaptoethanol or other reductants are added, along with heating the sample to 95 degrees C, usually for five minutes, to completely denature the protein. This further normalizes the protein, so along with charge, the proteins, as denatured, don't form unusually wide or compact structures. Samples typically run on SDS page gels would include whole cell lysates. These samples need to be either clarified to remove insoluble proteins or the insoluble proteins can be run separately. Purified proteins can be assessed for total purity using ImageJ as we will discuss in a bit or in process samples which are run to gauge the effectiveness of a purification step. In addition, a range of standards can be run. These standards are mixtures of purified proteins of known size and concentration that can be used to estimate size and or relative concentration, keeping in mind differences in extinction coefficients. SDS page relies on the fact that the proteins are charged. Protein charges are based on the amino acid sequence which determines what the isoelectric point of the protein is. This can be determined experimentally like the extinction coefficient we talked about but more commonly a theoretical value is used. This can also be done using the protein function in Benchling, as I mentioned earlier. Depending on the pH of the buffer and the isoelectric point of the protein, the charged protein will move towards the anode or cathode of a solution where an electric current has been applied. Because proteins are not all positively or negatively charged, this presents a problem in separation of proteins based on charge which is why SDS is added to the protein sample to normalize the charge. In panel A, protein mixed with SDS sample buffers loaded into wells. In panel B, chloride ions run faster than the SDS bound proteins and form an ion front. Glycinate ions flow in from the running buffer and form a front behind the protein. In panel C, a voltage grating is created between the chloride and glycinate ions which sandwich the proteins between them. In panel D, the proteins are stacked between the chloride and glycine ion fronts and at the interface between the stacking and resolving gels where the percentage of acrylamide increases and the pore size decreases. 
Movement of the proteins into the resolving gel is met with increased resistance. In panel E, the smaller pore size resolving gel begins to separate the proteins based on molecular weight because the charge to mass ratio is equal in all proteins in the sample because of bound SDS. In panel F, the individual proteins are separated into their band patterns. In this figure, lane 1 contains the molecular weight standards which can be used to estimate the size of the protein of interest. Typically, the size of the protein is known, so the band labeled unknown band can be identified as a protein of interest if its size matches up with what is expected. After the gel is run, it can be analyzed. ImageJ is free software from the National Institute of Health for analysis of a variety of images. This software works by converting the gel image into a histogram with more intense bands resulting in larger peaks as shown in the right panel. A standard curve can be run on the gel and used to calculate an unknown amount of protein from an in-process sample. In another video, I will review how to process images using ImageJ.